Um, this is going to be kind of difficult. This may have been a bad idea. <laughs> try to film all of this at the same time Whew, man I'm like already running so I'm gonna get my water additions weighed out and added to these with this water as it's getting heated up and uh, and see if I can get this mash going it's kind of ridiculous how little this eight gallon kettle looks compared to the 15 gallon kettle oh this is gonna be full you know when I first started I was kind of brewing extract batches and you know, the eight gallon kettle was the perfect size. I could even do it on my stove top in the house. It just took kind of forever to heat up, heat up the water. Oh, that is light to the top. That is literally right to the top of my kettle. It does actually get cold here in California, but I'm next to two fires, so I'm feeling nice and toasty. So I have two of almost everything. I've got two kettles. I've got two brew in a bag. I have one for my smaller kettle, one for my larger kettle. The only thing I needed something else of was the burner. And so I ordered this gas one that's down there. Thought I was making an upgrade uh, from this little cheap Walmart special that I have here. But in terms of heating time and everything, I, I prefer the Walmart, the Walmart special. This one's already at strike temp, and this one's like only at like 100 degrees. It's gonna burn like everything on the side of my kettle. I don't like it. I don't like the gas one. So if you're thinking about a burner, I'll, I'll find out which one it is. I'll link it down in the description below. But this little cheapy, I got, I know I got it from Walmart. I want to say it was like 50 bucks. This gas one was like 80 bucks. I could have bought another one of those. Oh well. Two loggers, one brew day, one crazy guy that's up at four in the morning. Time to mash in beer number two. What beers are we making today? In the little kettle, I've got a Munich Dunkel going. In the big kettle, I owe my brother-in-law, you know, the guy that I built the, uh, the kegerator for, I, I got to get another beer ready for him and he really wanted like a lighter lager, so I picked up from Northern Brewer the Atlantico Mexican Lager Kit. So I'll be doing that one in the big kettle and getting that one ready for him. So, all right, beer number two is mashed in. I'm gonna go ahead and spread my sleeping bag over both of them. Munich Dunkel's about to boil, mash went well. Atlantico's probably got another 20 minutes or so before it starts to boil. What are we doing for hops? For the Munich Dunkel, I'm bittering at 60 minutes with pearly hops, one ounce of pearly hops. And then at five minutes left, I'm gonna do a half an ounce of tetanang in that one. For the Atlantico, I'm going with straight German Hallertau, one ounce at 60 minutes, and then another ounce, somewhere around five minutes, I believe, as well, too. Oh man, that is a full kettle in my 15 gallon kettle. Look how much space I have. fermentation plan. So the Munich Dunkel, I'm using Y Yeast 2206 Bavarian Lager. I, I'm opting for just one pack of this because it is a slightly lower gravity beer. And I am going to be fermenting this one in my all-rounder 
under pressure in my garage, which is around 60 to 65 degrees. So it is gonna be a little warmer, but I'm gonna do it under pressure in the Firmzilla because I can. The Mexican lager, I'm going with one that I absolutely love. This is the White Labs Mexican lager yeast. Breakfast, just in time. So it got a little bit colder than I expected in my garage. My plan was to ferment my Munich Dunkel at room temperature, which I was thinking the garage was gonna stay around 65 and then during fermentation maybe get to 68. But as you could see, it got a little bit colder than I expected in here. I went ahead and pulled it inside since I was fermenting it under pressure and I ended up fermenting this one inside the house. It typically holds right around 68 degrees. I'm hoping that it's going to end up being clean. Two beers. Which one should I go with first? This one or this one? This one or this one? Let's talk about this Munich Dunkel. Brew day morning, I had planned to brew an Italian Pilsner. I thought I had 10 pounds of bark Pilsner malt, but in reality, I went to grab it and it ended up being bark Munich malt. I had ordered that for a Munich Dunkel. So last minute, change plans. To make things even more confusing, I even changed the recipe, which ultimately resulted in the beer that you see here. So the recipe was 10 pounds of Bark Munich malt, eight ounces of Victory malt, and six ounces of Carafa 30, which I think was too much. I think this Munich Dunkel ended up being more like a Schwartz beer. When I let my wife taste it, she was like, oh, that tastes like a stout. Yeah, Munich Dunkels are not supposed to have that roasted flavor in there. You can smell the roast, like chocolate, maybe coffee. It smells like a stout to me. Oh, but it's clean. So is it bad? No, it's not bad. I don't think it's a Munich Dunkel though. I think it's more like a Schwartz beer. Ended up at 5.3% alcohol. Nice smooth finish with a little roast character. Hints of chocolate and coffee. And then it finishes. It's very, it's quite drinkable. Not a lot of hop character. Not a lot of yeast character in, it, in there. It's, it's good. It's not a Munich Dunkel though. I mean, if I were to enter this in some sort of competition it, it would get docked points because it's got that roast flavor i think so if i were going to do this one again i think i would cut the victory to six ounces and i would cut the carafa three to three ounces and go from there the mexican lager it's pretty hazy it's hazy for a lager i did just move my keg i don't know i mean it doesn't matter i didn't move it i didn't jostle it around that much but it seems like every time i even remotely move my keg a little bit it really messes things up. Did not finish as low as I thought it was going to. It finished at 1014, which was a little bit, which is a little bit high. I was expecting about 1011, but it wouldn't go past 1014. So I only ended up with 4.3% alcohol in this one. It has like a nice malt character to it. Not a lot of yeast character. This one is just like really bready, nice clean finish. Not a lot of yeast character, not a lot of hop character either. Uh, really good. I would describe this as bready, smooth, very drinkable. If you can't ferment cold, but you want a lager, go pick up yourself some Lutra from Omega Yeast and make yourself a Mexican lager without needing temperature control. If you'd like to see how that's done, go ahead and click over here on this video and I'll walk you through the process.